Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection viewer layouts. Now, you may have noticed that there is a subtle flaw in our current implementation of the stretchy header. If the user scrolls beyond a certain point in the collection view, then the background image scales to be too small and the foreground image scales to be too large. And this really doesn't look very good at all. So in this episode, you're going to implement a maximum stretch limit, which the header can't grow beyond. This will fix the issue and also wrap up our implementation of the stretchy header layout. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. Initially, there appears to be no visual change between the app shown here and how the app looked at the end of the challenge from the previous video. But if the user scrolls the collection view as far down as they can, they'll realise that the header only stretches up to a certain point and not beyond it. And this fixes the nasty visual side effect of our previous implementation. The problem with the current implementation is that there's no cap on the amount that the two image views can be scaled by. Which means as long as the user is scrolling, the two image views are being scaled. And this results in the rather unpleasant visual side effect. Luckily, the fix is relatively straightforward. First, we need to declare a maximum stretch property on our layout. And we use a property so that it can be configured, making our layout reusable across different header designs and different devices with different screen sizes. Next, we then take this property into account when calculating the frame of the header. And if the calculated height is larger than this property, then we use the properties value instead. Next, we implement a check in our headers subclass that looks at the new delta value passed from the layout and compares it to the previous one and only updates the image views constraints if they're different. If we didn't implement this check, even though the height of the header will be capped, the image views will continue to scale as the user continued to scroll. Finally, for the purposes of this layout, we're going to set the maximum stretch property to be equal to the width of the collection view. This will give the image views a nice amount of stretch, but neither one will be able to go beyond the bounds of the collection view. Having completed the previous video and challenge, you've likely noticed that there is a subtle issue with the way that we've implemented this layout. If the user drags beyond what you might perceive as a reasonable amount, you start noticing gaps around the edges of the header, such as the one that you can see now at the top of the simulator. And this is because there is no limit to the scaling of the header, the background image view or the foreground image view. So we need to restrict that to an upper limit. And then once it hits that upper limit, it can't go beyond that. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's jump back into Xcode and open the DIY layout.swift file. And at the top of the DIY layout class, let's add a new variable called maximum stretch height, which is a CG float, and we'll give it a default value of zero. And this is what's gonna act as our upper limit. So now if we scroll down to layout attributes for elements in rect, we just need to update this line to take that maximum stretch height into account. So we're going to take that existing calculation and min that against the maximum stretch height and then whichever is the smallest is the one that will be used as the height on that frame. So we now need to set this maximum stretch height to some reasonable value. So let's jump into schedule view controller and we're going to set it here in view did load but the first thing we need to do is just change the cast of the layout to our DIY layout and then we can set the maximum stretch height and this time we're going to set it to the width and basically what that means is the width of the collection view and because the image is square and the width and height are pinned we're basically saying the stretch height is the same as the width which is the same as the height so if we build and run and now drag down we should find that the header stops growing beyond a certain point there you go so that you can see that the header stopped growing now because the cell is moving. You see that at the top cell. But you'll notice that the graphics are still scaling. So this has kind of got us halfway there. 
we now need to do some work in schedule header view to stop the graphics from scaling once we hit that upper limit. So stop the app from running and open schedule header view. And the first thing that we need to do is add a new private property called previous height. And this will be a CG float and we'll give it a default of zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this and test it against the current height. And if they're different, we're going to update the constraints. But if they're the same, and that means we've hit that upper limit, then we're not going to update the constraints. So if we jump down to apply layout attributes and we get the height or the current height from so CG rect to get height from the attributes frame and then we can do that test. So if previous height is not equal to height, then we can update the constraints. And then the last thing we need to do is just update previous height to the current height. And if we build and run, we should find now that we can continue to stretch up until we hit that limit, which is now. And there we can continue to scroll the cells, but the header and the graphics no longer scale beyond that upper limit. And that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. Since this video represents the final part of implementing the stretchy header layout, your challenge this time is to simply keep on watching, where in the next video we'll tackle a new layout, this time focusing on sticky headers, usually found in UI table view. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.